think I think sometimes people get the wrong impression. Maybe. I don't know, because sometimes people haven't showed up at my doorstep, you know, asking me, well, who are you? <laughs> but I like to try to respond to those things I feel the Holy Spirit inspiring me or speaking directly to me about certain aspects that maybe a viewer or a person has that if I share my part, then they identify with that and they're able to coordinate in their life the same circumstance, the situation that the Spirit of God could work in their life to minister to them. And so sometimes when I say people, I want them to connect in some way, that's really what it's all about, is about you finding that God is working with you where you're at, as you are, the way you are. And so I try to share in a lot of different settings and circumstances what I really do in life and what I do every day. And so today was kind of interesting was that I, uh, as I started to say earlier and the Holy Spirit kind of checked me was that I don't roll out of bed, you know, automatically and go, oh, I think I'll just pray first, read my Bible, you know, get all situated and circumstances all together, you know, and I'll get myself all cleaned up and then I'll, you know, start the ministry. As a matter of fact, when I roll out of bed, first thing I say is, God, take me to where you want me to be because this is the day that you've made and God help me, I'm going there. Because <laughs> I'm like you, I'm up out of bed and I'm on my way. Now, I'm a little different than you, you see. I don't really get all cleaned up and all fixed up, you know, like a lot of people do, you know, Metro or whatever they are, you know, and get into their either exercise routine or their morning routine or their cleanup routine or whatever because I've had such an unusual lifestyle that, you know, sometimes being disabled I wasn't able to get out of it. Sometimes, you know, I was working uh, graveyard shifts as opposed to working day shifts and I had a lot of different varieties of things going on so I have different ways of dealing with my day. But today, God stopped me from doing what I wanted to do. Which, to be perfectly honest, <laughs> this may sound funny, but every day, for the most part, when God has me doing videos, I just jump up out of bed and say a prayer and go there. I go straight to posting devotionals and things that I know that will help people to get into the Word and to hear God speak to them. So in the video ministry, there's usually like the audio Bible and the one-year Bible blog and uh, Bible Buddy, you know, those kind of things to get people focused in on looking to the Word of God, you know, and sometimes I listen to them, sometimes I don't, you know. For the most part anymore, I don't, you know, I jump into immediately sharing on video because then the Holy Spirit comes inside me and begins to teach me as I'm listening, speaking to you. And he teaches both of us at the same time. But today, God stopped me, you know, my tracks. God chose to not give me his spirit, you know, to share with you earlier and to care for our souls, so to speak, in preparing ourselves for the day by changing our attitude and doing the first video todays that I usually do, which is kind of like in a robe and kind of like half asleep, just to try to show you that the reality of life, you know, is that, yeah, I'm just like you, a normal human being. But today God kind of took me to a different place. It's like This time of the year when I go through my usual down time, usually kind of depressed, kind of down and out, he wanted me to stop and to pay attention to the beauty of the day that he's made for me. To appreciate it, to be glad for what I have today. Because today's going to be hot. It's going to get over 100 degrees. And maybe in your part of the country it will too. But it's going to be challenging because I have to close up the house and close curtains and make it dark inside, turn off lights and run the air conditioning and keep it cold because 
quite frankly, I can't handle the heat like I used to. I used to get out in 110 degree weather, you know, and I'd be up there on a hot tin roof, you know, with welders, you know, and working on, you know, whatever it was that the job required when I was a boiler maker. You know, it was kind of like, wow, we were out in the so hot, burning sunlight, you know. And we'd be there even when there was like, you know, like warnings about not working because we weren't union, you know. So the job required what the job required. So we did it. <laughs> we got it done. But then one time I had a heat stroke or a heat exhaustion or whatever you want to call it, something. And after, since then I've been susceptible a little bit to the heat, so I have to be careful somewhat. You know. Not too much really, but somewhat. But today, God wanted me to stop doing what I'm doing and to be more disciplined in some of the things that I'm doing, like with the, the forums, you know, and some of the things in my mind to get them out, you know, into practical places where I can, I like to say vent, but it really is sharing the Word of God, you know, and to express that which God has placed in my heart because He's already done it in my experiences. You know, God did something unique with me that I really appreciate about Him is that whenever I had a question, He'd take me through the experience for the most part or something very, very close and very similar. You know, and I can't admit to having babies or things like that, but, you know, I've had some pretty interesting experiences that I can relate to different things at different times that people have gone through because I've gone through a lot more than what most people usually go through. <laughs> some of it uh, by choice, some of it because I was just stupid. <laughs> but I always took Jesus with me. And that's the part that I appreciate about God is that in all your experiences, you should be learning from them. You should be seeing somehow God's hand working through them. You should be knowing that the Holy Spirit is dealing with you in a personal and intimate way that maybe he's not doing with everyone the same way, but he's dealing with you that way. And so today, I guess what I'm trying to say is seek to find that which God wants to remind you of, that God wants to take you to. You may not be involved in everything that everyone else is involved in, but if you're in relationship with God, he may take you where he wants you to be as opposed to where everyone else is going. Because sometimes God wants you to be alone with him. Sometimes he wants you to be in a crowd. Sometimes he wants you to just kick back, take a look around and say thank you. You know, I think in America we don't give thanks enough for what we have. Literally. I mean, I know there are people complaining about the economy and no jobs and, you know, about the president or about the conflict between, you know, cultural groups or, you know, homosexuals or lesbians or, or gay rights or privileges or freedoms or rights or whatever it may be. But that doesn't stop you from being thankful. As a matter of fact, it should be even more reason to give thanks. Because as long as you have conflict, then you know you're in the will of God. As long as you know that God is working through you, you will have tribulation in this world. Because Jesus promised that. He said that this is what's going to happen. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And so, when you learn to give thanks, when you learn to be appreciative of whatever it is you have, whether from Walmart, Kmart, you know, a dumpster diving, um, people giving it to you, people donating, people doing whatever it is that they do, or you earned it with the blood, sweat, and tears of your hard work and labor, or however you got it, even if the government provided for it, like some people say, oh, well, you know, you're just freeloading. Well, I don't know anybody, you know, since back in the welfare days, you know, when they used to have welfare moms, you know, that were getting housing, you know, literally, by spending the money and you could legally, you know, on welfare buy a house, you know. And I know a woman that did that. <laughs> Amazed me, but they did. And I think when we take that moment to be still, 
when we take the time to reevaluate how argumentative maybe we become or dissonant to, I like to say, the, the heartbeat of God. And some people out there that like this resonation with the universe, you know, like the universe resonates at a certain speed, you know, they like this quantum physics idea that if you could resonate or you could speed up your metabolism in some way, your cell structure, that you would be like the angels, that you would suddenly see the kingdom of heaven around you. Well, you know, sci-fi wise, it's kind of interesting, you know, but when you get into the heartbeat of God, you begin to realize that God isn't all about judgment, and he's not about wrath. He's about love and mercy, and he wants to personify that through us by giving grace to us, not so that we would be taking it and abusing it or using it for our own benefit, but that we were meant to give grace for grace. We were meant to forgive because we've been forgiven. We were meant to love because he had given us his love. And that's why he sent his Holy Spirit to us, so that we would not be so mindful of ourselves as a narcissistic society that we are. And don't get me wrong, I, I don't want to say this too loudly, but you know, to put it bluntly, even when we are at our most righteous times as Christians, I hate to say it, but I think Americans really are pretty narcissistic, you know, and we're pretty much concerned about ourselves. I don't see too much denial of self taking up our cross and following Jesus as much as what maybe the first century, second and third century Christians did. And that's okay as long as we recognize we are narcissistic, we are self-centered, we are self-seeking, we do want our own way and our own will. Because you see, when you're honest about it, when you're truthful, when you really get down to the rubber meets the road and you tell God, you know, yes God, I am selfish, I am prideful, I do have an attitude, I am an American, I do stand up for my rights, even though I should not be so assertive as much as I should be trusting in you. I don't need to be so reactive as I need to be active in sharing the gospel. I don't need to be so caught up in the world and its ways as I need to pray in secret. And then you would reward me openly. I think the world in, Christian, in Christianity has gotten a hold of us and our hearts and taken our focus and our attention off of the unseen realm of God's kingdom. And now we're getting caught up into what we can see, what we can feel, what we can touch, what we can handle with our own hands. But we've forgotten all about the spiritual things, or dare I say, the spiritual warfare that we're in. Because Satan wants to capture your soul, and he wants to affect your attitude every day of your life. He wants you today to be very righteous, because today there's some things going on that Christians are standing up for and asserting themselves for it, being, oh, let's put on you know, the righteousness of God instead of the armor of God. And having done all to stand, meaning that we don't do anything, um, some people want to stand with a fist than stand with a hand. And we need to discipline ourselves and structure ourselves to not be caught up emotionally so we're not led by our own feelings and not seeking the Lord to be led by His Word. It's easy to act righteous. It's easy to be legalistic. And it's easy to assert ourselves. But it's really hard to admit the truth and find that we need to be the ones to repent, not necessarily telling everyone else to do something that God hasn't told them to do. Don't avoid hard work. For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems grievous and painful. But afterwards, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. By those who have a harvest of fruit which consists in righteousness and conformity to God's will in purpose, God's will in thought, and God's will in action resulting in right living and right standing with God. Hebrews 12.11 an undisciplined person looks for ways to avoid hard work. Passivity, or passive, passivity, yeah, passivity prevails in our culture. Everything is geared towards making life easier. 
Ride the escalator, take the elevator, get fast food carryout. But the easy way is not always the best way. Just as we need to exercise our bodies, so we also need to exercise our faith by facing difficult challenges. Use faith to forgive those who offend you and to trust God when you can't see how problems will be solved. Soon you will enjoy a harvest of righteousness from the discipline you endure today. Today, there is a big social media cause being personified as the Christian versus the ungodly. and I don't see it that way. I see the Christian being challenged in his heart to examine himself to find out whether he be in the will of God or outside of it. And I see all these challenges that come before us as stumbling blocks to distract us from what God has told us to do or attract us to some cause that we think we have to assert ourselves for because we have some popular leader or some popular pastor or somebody that we look up to caught up into it because they've gotten involved in it they don't realize how much they affect other people. So then you get these kind of like mass hysteria movements where people are like flash mob Christians as opposed to thoughtful, mindful, and prayerful. Because if you take the time to stop, be still, you'll know God. If you take the time to wait on the Lord, you'll be a good shepherd, and He will speak to your heart. If you seek the Lord to know Him, He will be found by you. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, not leaning in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledging Him, He'll direct your path. The question is, do you really want God to direct your path, or have you already decided you want yourself to be involved in all these things that so easily catch up our attention and cause us to run off doing something maybe we haven't prayed about, maybe we haven't talked to God about, but we assume by our own understanding and thinking that it's something we have to do, should do, or really if we got seriously honest before God, we just want to do it because we want to protest and do something other than 